In this video, let's talk about minimum RSSI. RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. In Wi-Fi world, it's a relative number. The value we see is represented in negative format. The closer to zero, the stronger the signal. Ubiquity has a mobile app called Wi-Fi Man. It can tell you the Wi-Fi signal. For example, I have great, bare, and poor different Wi-Fi signals in these three examples. Here comes the main focus of this video, minimum RSSI. This is my lab environment. I have two Unify access points. If I click any of them, go to settings. As you can see, for each radio frequency, there is a setting to enable minimum RSSI. By default, it's disabled. If you enable it, you will see two separate settings. One is to adjust the value for minimum RSSI. The other one is it's just a flag to enable or disable the so-called interference blocker. These two are separate settings. In this video, let's focus on the slider one. I will have a separate video to talk about the second option, interference blocker. I don't want to mix these two in the same video because it will only make the already complicated situation even more complicated. We all know the longer the distance between your device and your access point, the weaker the signal, right? So in this simple diagram, I have three different dash lines just to represent the strength of the signal. If you have two access points, you need to consider the roaming experience of your mobile device, and you may want to set the minimum RSSI carefully. You may think, okay, that's a piece of cake, right? You can calculate the overlapping of the two access points, and then you just choose a RSSI value in the middle, right? Okay, it may work fine for this first roaming path, but what if the second one is the most possible moving path for your device? Do you really want your device to roam at this point? For another example, if your device moves this way, when it is here, you basically don't have any good signal, right? Do you want it to roam or not? So a lot of factors, but in fact, to make the minimum RSSI setting effective, there's another thing, which is, okay, you set a value, but when it will take effect? The answer may surprise you. Later, you will see in this video. There's another very important factor in the roaming. That's your client device. Your Wi-Fi device can decide when to disconnect or connect to AAP, right? It has its own strategy that will also sometimes conflict with your minimum RSSI settings. It's always a good idea to understand the Wi-Fi signal situation in your particular setup. Ubiquiti provides a very good tool, Wi-Fi Man, if you choose the floor plan mapper. If you have a camera, if you can move your machine, let's say on an iPad or iPhone, yes, it will scan your room, your environment, and then come up with the map. These are two signal maps I got from Wi-Fi Man by using two separate SSIDs in my lab environment. First, I put a U6 light access point at this corner and I force my mobile device to connect only to this AP and then I move around in the environment. I got this map. For the second one, I put a U6 enterprise AP at this corner and in similar approach, I achieved achieved this map. If you look at them side by side, refer to this legend, you can see if it's yellow, it's still okay. But if orange, that means it's already below 70, close to 80. That's the threshold point you want to consider to make the device roam if possible. Basically, if you look at these two maps, the area in the middle is showing orange color in both maps. I'm going to move my mobile device from this corner to this corner. I want to see when my device is in this area, how the roaming works if I set the minimum RSSI to different values. 
In my lab environment, I'm going to use a Unify switch connected to two Unify access points. And I'm going to use a iPad as the mobile device to move from this location to this location. In the middle, I want to see how the roaming works. To explain the different behavior of the roaming, I need to look into the wireless packets. To capture the packets, I'm going to use another Mac to run the the sniffer. Originally, I only planned to use one sniffer, put it close to the first access point. Then I realized when the mobile device is moving far away from the first AP, close to the second AP, many wireless packets will be lost because they will simply not be able to reach this sniffer. So I added another sniffer. I will move the second sniffer together with my mobile device just to make sure I capture everything. In Unify Network Controller, in the Wi-Fi settings, I created a SSID. It involves both access points. And in the Wi-Fi band, I only selected 5G just to simplify the wireless packets capturing. And then let's check the individual settings for the two APs. For example, the first AP, the U6 Lite. For 5G frequency, the width is 80, channel is 36, and I enabled a minimum RSSI. You can see the slider. There's a permitted range from 67 to 90. There's no recommended value to set RSSI, so it has to be adjusted based on your particular environment, your mobile device, and your access points, signal strength, your room floor plan, a lot of factors. In this video, we are going to discuss how it will impact your roaming experience. So I will pick two extreme situations. One is minus 67. The other one is minus 90. Let's see if you set the minimum RSSI to these two values, what will happen. First, let's start with minus 67. I make sure these two access points have the same minimum RSSI setting. Before digging into roaming, let's first have a small warm-up exercise. Let's look at the reconnect function in Unified Controller because it works in a very similar way when your Wi-Fi signal threshold is reaching the minimum RSSI, what the access point will do. In the top right of the screen, I show you the Wi-Fi client. I'm running a Wi-Fi man app on it so that you can see the effect when we disconnect the connection. Now in the lower right, I'm ready to kick the Wi-Fi client out. In the left part, let me run the sniffer. Okay, sniffer is running. Now let me reconnect the Wi-Fi client. Done. As you can see in the top right, the reconnection is done. Okay, stop sniffering. I already opened the captured Wi-Fi packets in Wireshark. I applied the filter just for your convenience. I put the filter in the top left window as well. We can briefly examine the filter. I only want to see the management frame and only if the frame is about authentication or de-authentication or association or disassociation or it's about four-way handshakes. And in the end, I say I only want to see the Wi-Fi frames between the particular access point and my Wi-Fi client. After applying the filter, as you can see, I only see very few frames. And the very first one, interestingly, is disassociation. Later, you will see this is the difference between reconnect option and the minimum RSSI option from the AP perspective. For the minimum RSSI operation, the AP will issue a de-authentication notification instead of disassociation. But after this one, the process is similar. Even after disassociation, the Wi-Fi client doesn't have any other choices, so it will try to reconnect to the same AP. So that's why you see the authentication and the reassociation and then the four-way handshakes. Everything's expected. Now we are ready to really check the roaming.
in my first test i'm going to use the minimum rssi setting with the minus 67 value the strongest value i can set in unify controller so let's see how the value will impact roaming as you can see from the diagram i'm going to start with the u6 light ap i'm holding a ipad from the right side the screenshot you can see currently the wi-fi signal is very very strong now you can see i'm holding the ipad moving to the u6 enterprise okay it's running and the signal strong will start dropping it's minus 50 some still strong enough and as you can see here it is still connected to u6 light now it's dropping to below 70 already right from the connected wi-fi access point you can see it's still u6 light just from the wi-fi map i don't see the roaming happen already it seems it is still connected to the u6 light it seems seems our minimum RSSI setting is not really effective, right? So let's continue watching. The signal strength continue to drop. Even though I'm walking, roaming, it seems it hasn't happened yet. Okay, now it happened because I was kicked out of the original AP. Now after some back and forth, now I'm connected to the U6 enterprise, right? Even though the signal strength is so weak, it's much lower than minus 67, but I'm still connecting to it. I'm continue walking. Okay, so the roaming happened again. I was kicked out of the U6 enterprise, but then reconnect to the same U6 enterprise because the U6 light simply didn't accept me. Now I'm walking closer to the U6 enterprise. The signal is stronger. I'm stably staying with the new access point, which is U6 enterprise. The whole process is so weird. Let's see what really happened. On the screen, I opened two Wireshark window. The left one is for the captured packets for sniffer one, and the right Wireshark is for sniffer number two. For the left one, I filtered on the D authentication packets between the iPad and this AP. In the right Wireshark, I filtered the packets using D authentication frames and the packets between the iPad and the U6 enterprise. Another thing I need to mention here is the so-called minimum RSSI to see whether it really works is to see whether AP initiates the de-authentication. If AP wants to kick the client out, AP will issue a frame which is de-authentication and de-authentication is not really a request. It's simply a notification which means okay you are already kicked out. It's just to notify you. Except it or not it's already the fact and then it implies the this association will happen just some background about what do we mean by minimum rssi to take effect from the two wireshark windows you can see in the left part yes i see a whole bunch of the authentication frames but if you check the source column they are all from ipad i don't see any single the authentication frame initiate from from this AP, which means the minimum RSSI setting for this AP was never effective in our testing. And if you check the right side Wireshark, yes, if you scroll down a little bit, you do see some frames sourced from the U6 Enterprise AP, right? But are they related to minimum RSSI? No, because if you check the frame details, if you expand the wireless management section for the reason code, you see it's simply because the AP received something from the iPad, but the AP doesn't think that's valid. So AP simply say, you are not supposed to send me this message and I'm kicking you out. So it's not because of the minimum minimum RSSI setting. And if you check other similar frames, they have the same result. So basically from both APs perspective, the minimum RSI setting was never effective. Let's use this 
U6 light packets as example. See the first column for timestamp. Let's check several of them. Let's see why the deauthentication happens. Let's say 29 seconds. If you check this captured screen recording for iPad, what happened at 29 seconds? The Wi Fi signal strong is exactly minus 75. This is a very interesting threshold. I will have a separate video talking about Apple's iPad, iPhone, or Mac machines roaming strategy. In that video, you will see the minus 75 is exactly the threshold for iPad. If the signal is at this low, the Apple device will initiate the disconnect. It will try to connect to other AP. That's why all this deauthentication happens. It's because the iPad initiated the roaming, not because of the AP. For minimum RSS to take effect, the AP need to initiate the deauthentication process. Just to summarize, what we see from the captured package are simply how the iPad react to the different signal situation. iPad take initiatives to decide to roam or not. You may wonder, then what's the point of the minimum RSSI setting? Let's talk about that. In the test I just did, I walked from the left side of the testing area quickly to the right side, to the second AP. So I didn't stay very long in the middle orange area. That's the area where I expect the roaming to happen. I expect the minimum RSSI to take effect. Here comes the very important information about minimum RSSI. Only if the signal strong stay below that threshold for 30 seconds, then the AP will take initiative to disconnect your Wi-Fi client. That's why the minimum RSSI didn't take effect in our first testing. Now let me repeat the testing. When I walk through this middle area, I will stay in this area for more than 30 seconds and I will capture the network packets in the same way. Let's check the effect together. Okay, I finished the second testing for minimum RSSI equals to minus 67. I recorded the iPad screen. I even noted down the whole timeline. As you can see in the short three minutes period, a lot of interesting things happened. Let's first briefly look at the recorded screen. Let me start playing. So now I'm slowly walking from the first AP to the second AP. And at this moment, the signal is strong. Now it's dropped. You can see minus 60, minus 74. I stay at the same area without moving. So the signal strong will stay at this level for a very long time. Let me scroll a little bit. Let's see when the yellow color happened. It's about 14 seconds, right? No down this time because that's very important later. Let me briefly drag the video let me move to 44 and let it play let me pause now just from the recorded video it seems at this point nothing happened here you can see the connected access point is still u6 light right but let's check the two captured packets window in wireshark starting from 45 second the ap initiate the authentication message this is exciting it's already 20 minutes minutes into the video is the first time we see a deauthentication packet related to the minimum RSSI. Why it happened at this time? If you subtract 30 seconds from 45, you get 15, right? What happened at 15? Remember, we just checked at 15, the signal strong dropped below minus 67. The AP waited for 30 seconds and then initiated the deauthentication only because we set the minimum RSSI to minus 67. That explains. Okay, move on. Right after the deauthentication, you can see iPad authenticate again. Why? Because even though the signal strong was below minus 67, 
it's still the best option for the iPad. At that time, the iPad was still so far away from the second AP. So iPad decided, okay, whatever, I still want to connect to the original AP, right? So that's why you see this authentication thing. Then see, interestingly, at 47 seconds, iPad initiate the deauthentication. For some reason, the iPad decided, let me try the second AP. See the right side window? This authentication happened happens after the left side deauthentication. So iPad decided to connect to the second AP and then it connected even the four-way handshakes also happened. But apparently iPad is not happy with the connection situation. Why? Because you can see right after the four-way handshakes in the right side, in the left side you can see it re-authenticated to the first AP one more time. So the back and the false keep happening even though in the captured window i continue playing you see only at about 48 49 seconds the wi-fi man app realized something happened sometimes the wi-fi man will reflect your situation but sometimes it has delayed will simply ignore what happened behind of the screen because the things happened too frequently too fast and the wi-fi man didn't have time to react that's what we observed right the similar thing happened again and again i won't waste your time to talk through all of them as you can see in the short three minutes so many back and false connection and disconnection happened and most of the actions happened with the first AP. Why? Remember I stayed in the middle area for a long time, right? I was still close to the first AP instead of the second AP. That's why in most situations I will still reconnect back to the very first AP. In the end, finally, after three minutes, I stably connect to the second AP. The whole process ended the minus 67 value I set to minimum RSSI doesn't make sense. It doesn't help my Wi-Fi client's roaming experience. It only make the experience worse. All this back and forth connection disconnections shouldn't have happened. If I stay in that middle orange area for more than 30 seconds let it be i still have reasonable connection right i can still surf the internet i don't want to roam to another ap why kick me out the very last testing of this video is relatively simpler and much shorter. In this testing, I'm going to set the minimum RSSI to minus 90, the weakest signal strength. Let's see whether it makes sense, what will happen. From this signal strength map, you can see if I move from the left side AP to the right side AP, after this section, the signal will be become very bad but the strengths will still be higher than minus 90. After I reach this area I won't have any reasonable Wi-Fi signal I won't be able to access internet at all. Let me play the recorded session. I will fast forward because in the very first 50 seconds it's very boring nothing happened. Now the signal dropped to minus 70, but still nothing happened. Remember we mentioned the threshold for Apple device to roam is 75, right? Okay, now it's right below 75. Red color already. Yep. Now you can see the roaming happened. The Apple device roamed to U6 Enterprise AP. Let's see what happened at that 50 some second time frame. In the lower part of the screen, in the left side, I filtered the packets on the, the frames which I am interested in, and it's between the U6 Lite AP and my iPad. But interestingly, nothing's there, which means in the whole process, no de-authentication or authentication related packets were even captured. We will explain why. But if you check the right side at 54, Four seconds right at this point you can see the source 
is from iPad. The destination is the AP. So the iPad initiated the authentication. Why? As we explained, because the signal was under 75. So the Apple device took initiative, it decided to roam to the new AP. In the whole process, the minimum RSSI settings in both APs didn't take effect because the value was simply set to low, it's minus 90. Long before the signal strength reached that low level, the Apple device already roamed by itself. Go back to the left side. Why nothing's captured? Because when the iPad went further and further from the first AP because the threshold, the minimum RSSI for the first AP was not reached. The first AP didn't take initiative to disconnect. And then when the iPad was far enough, when it reached the second AP's area, the iPad was too far away from the first AP. So iPad either didn't initiate the de-authentication or the packet was lost. But anyway, from the first AP side, the sniffer didn't receive anything about the authentication. That's what happened. This third testing is very short and the result is expected. Basically, after this long tape video, we demoed the two extreme value settings, minus 67 or minus 90. They don't make sense in my lab environment. So when you set your minimal RSSI setting, you may also need to pay attention. You may want to start with minus 75 or minus 80 and then fine tune the value to make it work in your particular environment. Okay, thanks for watching.